We all know the importance of a good snare drum because simply put, if your snare is trash, well, your entire mix is trash. Here, Frederick shows the importance of finding the right snares to blend well and complement each other to create one huge snare sound. Check it out and enjoy. We have the snare drum. What I have done here, I have, as you can hear, there's a quite a lot of reverb on the snare drum. Here we have another mic. And also it sounded really good from as, as it was delivered. Here we have bottom issue. That's a trigger they deliver also. And then I put my own trigger on here, which is three different kind of snare drums. Uh, I can see if I can play and solo them for you. One snare for body, one snare for attack, and a little bit in there for some reverb. Yes. Or room sound. Exactly. That was my plan back then, I so if I remember wrong. And then I have some kind of bus here to this extra sidechain compression that I have on the snare drum. Are you putting your direct microphones to trigger the reverb, or are you using like a room sample to trigger the reverb? I'm sending from, from the master bus, or you're sending to the reverb, if that was you meant. Okay, yeah, the snare group. Okay, so everything is going to there. Yes, everything going there. And then because this, I have to send the reverb, I have to go like the, that reverb before the update. To get it working, you need to send stereo in to get stereo out. So, but I have changed that now. So, but when we did it, it was like that. So, this is for the, the small room that I'm sending, and this is for the big room I'm sending. And for the whole uh, master for the snare drum, I use this guy here. Your render. Yeah, it doesn't do too much either, I think. I take up some treble at 12k here. Here I put up oh, 4.5 dB on around 3.6 and take out 1 dB at 400, which I normally don't do. I don't know why I did it here, but I did it. And then I take up around 200, like 4.5 dB for the snare drum. This EQ never become a, became my favorite, but uh, I had to try it out. And then this compressor here for the snare drum. Get a bit more punch. So let's see, we've got two to one. Um, we have a fast release. Is there an attack time in there? I've never used the plugin before. Uh, there is attack time and it is 100 milliseconds. Ah, so, okay, there you go, slow yeah. attack time. Slow attack time, fast release time, because the snare is going so fast. I think I took down the output of some reason. Uh, so, but there, it's, it gets a bit tighter, if that's the right word, I think. Yes. And it gets a little, little bit more puncher. Because they're playing so fast, you have to be very easy with what you're doing. You know, you cannot have it like a big snare drum, you need to have a tight snare drum. I think this kind of music is the hardest one to mix, actually, to be honest. I agree. I mean, when you have really, really fast tempos and very technical playing, it's hard to have a massive bottom end. It's hard to have things that sound larger than life. They have to be very tight, yeah. very controlled. Can we hear all of the individual snare layers, how they blend together to create the final sound? But it's kind of wimpy snare drum. You, you cannot make a big snare drum here, I think, when it's going so fast with blast beats. What I've done here, this is just some volume up for these blast beats here. And also it's like, try to have the samples, like you have a multi-sample, so you have s soft hits. Because I hate when it's blast beat and the velocity is 127. I think it sounds like <laughs> bad. Maybe I'm an old man, but... <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. I mean, it's some. I think some bands in deathcore have made that kind of a standard where everything is just sounds like machine gun drums and because it's probably too fast for an actual human to play. Yes, it is. It's impossible. 